Hi folks, I'm Mandalus. I'm back again. Um, and this time, I'm gonna do a showcase of uh, some odd subjects in plastic modeling. And I know maybe some of you have been waiting for my uh, Kitty Hawk updates. But, um, okay, so unfortunately today, I'm not gonna be showing you that, but soon, definitely soon, maybe even in a few days or a week, I will definitely show you the progress on my uh, Kitty Hawk because it's been, I think, almost two months and I know a lot of you might be wondering where I disappeared or am I even working on this model. So anyway, just to let you know, I am working on the Kitty Hawk, but I'm slow. And I have reasons for that. So anyway, today, I'm going to just get into the odd subjects first. Starting off with uh, maybe not so odd subjects, but still considered kind of niche, I guess. So first off is uh, D D9R. It's an armored bulldozer. And this is by Ming. So this model, I I think I built it maybe about five, six years ago. It was my uh, first Ming brand model. And I found that Ming is, uh, is, they're quite new in the market. Um, but they come up with quite impressive models. But I find it a bit difficult to assemble, unlike uh, the Trumpeta models, which are much better. Anyway, okay, so I'll just show you the build here. Uh, this had a lot of uh, parts and it was uh, quite an interesting subject for me because it is a bulldozer. I have done many tanks and bulldozer might be slightly similar because you know it has a uh, it has tracks but uh, it doesn't have a turret or a gun so anyway this one I did a very heavy uh, dirt weathering on it so this is the VR9 it's a 135 scale and then next this is also by Ming. It is a VSKFZ617. It is a land mine uh, blower. It is one of the Germans, uh, you know, like weird vehicles that they have made during the Second World War. So the build is, uh, it was quite a difficult build because they, they have these uh, metal weights that sits in the tracks and I found it very difficult to actually put in those uh, weights. So, so this model is actually uh, very heavy and it looks like this so it is uh, when you lift it up you can feel the weight there are metal pieces inside of this uh, the tracks here So it's it's a very weird shape. Uh, it is a tank, but I 
think these uh, tracks were used to step on the landmines and to blow it up. Yeah. So these things will actually move. But I can't really make it move because it's really tight. And there are some metal chains that comes with the, the model. I've built this also probably about five, six years ago, I think. So it is a weird model, but it is a very common uh, available model by Ming. So it's not so niche. So as I as I go further on some of my these uh, niche models, you might see something weird later. But I'll keep that for the last. And the next is this. Uh, it's called a BA three four nine D Natter with a launch tower. This is by Dragon. It's quite an old uh, model. And I, I built this maybe more than 10 years ago. It comes with a small, this uh, jet propelled plane that actually rockets up from the tower. And this kit came with a lot of uh, photo age, but you know, 10, 15 years ago, I just had no skill whatsoever for for photo age, so a lot of things didn't get attached to the to the tower. So this is the how the manual looks like. And uh, some color sheens there. So this in fact this one is really covered with all the spider webs. I tried to clean it up, but it looks like that. Uh, I think this color scheme was. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's this one. But this is supposed to be yellow color. So I sort of mixed it with this uh, blue spots. But I put the different decals. So it's uh, heavily weathered. Those are the uh, probably some rocket launchers in the front. So the tower looks quite interesting to me at the time, so I, I bought this kit. And uh, there's supposed to be a lot of uh, photo age along the towers, but I couldn't bend it, so it's not there. And you can see there's a one long photo age ladder, it goes all the way up. like that so and this is a 148 scale it's 148 and next I have uh, another old model by dragon it's the uh, German v2 missile and this is 135 scale. I think this model is is back in the 90s. It's really old. And I built this in I think 2005. Year 2005. So it's it's quite a simple build. And yeah, the color scheme is, uh, it was interesting. 
so I had to uh, mask it. it looks like that it is quite the uh, tall so yeah there's three layers of uh, paint It's red, brown, brown, green, and yellow, so four colors. And uh, did a heavy weathering and uh, like scratches on it. Anyway, it looks quite dirty because I've been leaving it out on the shelf for what more than. 15 years, I guess. So these are, I think it's quite niche. Maybe not many people might like to build them. But recently, uh, some some other makers, new makers like Takom, did came out with the V2 uh, missile in 135 and 172 scale. So it's probably common now, but maybe back then it wasn't. So next, I'll show you something totally not military. So this is a... Uh, uh, if you're familiar with Gundam robots, this is the high new Gundam. But what's different about this Gundam is it's not by the Japanese Bandai uh, maker. This is actually by some uh, small J China Chinese company. It's called Hobby Crazy. It's a 135. And actually what's different about this, it is just the head of the Gundam. And Bandai makes thousands of Gundam models uh, it's a very good you know models uh, snap-on good quality but these Chinese uh, Gundams I've never seen before so I, I had to get it because it was something weird and and this model comes with uh, with some LEDs uh, which was quite challenging because there was a lot of uh, soldering involved and I think it is oh yeah it is shown here this is the wiring diagrams but I had no idea what this was trying to show because it's so complicated so I, I had to like figure it out myself some decals left so it's a very niche uh, model I think and I don't think it's available easily it's a head desktop model so it's a 135 scale Gundam Gundams usually in one 100 scale or 144 because uh, the robot is quite big so actually this head and uh, this D D9R would be the same scale actually so so that's how big Gundam but Gundam's a fictional character so it doesn't really exist in real life so uh, it it was something interesting for me to build, so I, I wanted to build this. But, you know, of course, the plastic qualities are not so good. But the Chinese are quite creative in a sense that they copied the Japanese characters. And actually, these, uh, these parts are like movable. And in fact, this thing can be closed, but 
I I don't think I wanna close it now. It could break. And just now I tried it. The LED still works. Actually, there's a there's a lithium ion battery that sits in there. And the switch. Actually, this is the switch. Uh, it's not supposed to look like that. There is uh, another part that goes on top here. But when I press this, the switch doesn't come on, so I have to take it out and just press it directly. So Okay, so the LED is not functioning. Oops, I think I saw some. I think there's some circuit issues but this thing has been sitting for quite some time so so unfortunately you can't see the LED it's supposed to light sh light up on the eyes and up here and down here it looked quite cool when when I first built it and it lighted up Nope, it's not gonna switch on. So I'm so oh, it did come on a little bit, but yeah, I guess the wiring's uh, there is some kind of a circuit issue. So anyway, I'm sorry you can't see the LED working. But the head itself looks cool and you know in um, in some other sh maybe soon in some other showcases i'll show you my collections of gundam robots by bandai's actually i've built a lot of uh, these gundams also and i have interest in this because when i was growing up there was this animation and you know as a kid i think uh you would like this kind of stuff so okay i'm gonna put this here and my next uh item this is all in japanese okay this is by aoshima it is actually a Nichiyu platter and what it is it is actually a, a forklift so I thought it's something very not common but it is in plastic model so I yeah I just had to try this out and uh, this is a 132nd scale forklift. Okay, these bombs are not part of the, the model. This is from a Hein, uh, Hein 24, uh, 135 scale. So this is a 132nd. And it also comes with this palette that you know it's a common palette that uh, the warehouse will use this so it also comes with a, a figure driving the forklift So it is a weird, uh, it's an odd subject. Not many people would build forklifts, I think. But recently, Hasegawa and uh, Aoshima has a lot of those construction vehicles, you know, like backhoes and caterpillars and bulldozers. So that's uh, quite niche, I think. 
and okay last two this is Italeri's 20 foot container okay this 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 is a military container it's a 135 scale but uh, usually people would build this to to make a you know diorama with a with tanks or you know because if it's just a container it will be a bit boring but I did not follow the military's decal so what's special about this container is I actually did this uh, I colored it blue and I put Nippon Express uh, logo onto it I, I'm not sure if you know everybody knows Nippon Express but and this is the it's something I got off the internet so it does actually exist in this color but usually Nippon Express is is white the container is white and the wordings are different in color so why did I do it for Nippon Express and not like uh, Hapak Lloyd or that there's so many other containers because I thought this would be easy for me to do uh, there was a lot of masking jobs that I did and this word this Japanese word here was uh, difficult to mask but I managed to cut it out and mask it so I think I did the sequence in in white, red and then blue and I have something left here so I printed out the word Nippon Express with the logo and I cut out the stick the masking tape cut it out and I stick those letters on to here to mask it and then I I think I sprayed blue last that's what I did so this is this is a bit you know something unique maybe and these decals uh, this was from the model and I painted this and the word that Japanese word was supposed to go in here but this was too small to mask and I thought I could do a free hand but finally I gave up because I thought I could mess it up so I just left it uh, blank so this is the container 20 foot container which I think is a bit uh, unusual also and <clears throat> second last is this combat set this is a hand grenade uh, it's the M67 and MK2 hand grenade and this is a one to one scale I built this quite long ago, maybe 15, 16 years ago. It's a very simple model with only a few parts and it came with the metal, uh, some metal pins. So here it is. These are all plastics, but the pin here is uh, it's metal. So it's quite uh, unique so I, I built this I don't know if this pin will yeah I can actually pull the pin out but if I do that it could uh, blow up so I'm not gonna pull this pin out so, and the other <coughs> grenade is this 
I think these are <coughs> American grenades, uh, World War II. They had another set for the German grenades, but I didn't get that because the German grenades doesn't look good. Looks like ice cream cones. So this pin will also, yeah, it will come out actually if I pull it. So these are the grenades plastic models which I'm not sure if they even sell it now this is by Arai a Japanese brand this. and last I don't have any instruction manuals or anything on this model because it's been too long I built it probably when I was a kid maybe like 10 12 years old and it is this thing here it is a skull i think it could be a one to one scale but it's a bit small for a for an adult so actually this was like uh, in one piece couple of pieces here and the teeth was uh, all a separate piece the colors has uh, you know faded it actually glows in the dark and yeah it's really dirty because it's been sitting around for I don't know what 30 30 over years maybe so I don't know what brand you know I can't remember, I don't have any papers on this but I know it was built back in the 80s when I was a kid and it survived the, you know, my collection so anyway, yeah, uh, this video was a bit long so these are some of the odd subjects uh, niche items that I think that, uh, that which I have built that I wanted to show everybody so yeah thanks for watching and uh, I hope you liked it so uh, my next update will be definitely on the Kitty Hawk I'm not gonna bring you any other stuff uh, until I show you my Kitty Hawk updates so stay tuned and uh, hope to see you very soon thank you